Hi everyone, uh, it's Alfred, and welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Um, I was actually trying to figure out a different video to record, but while working on that, I decided to bang my head against this some more. This is the Wizard of Ego quest still. So I'm just going to jump right back in. Take a dusty look. After some more digging, you turn up some kind of old book. It's a bit dusty and worn after sitting under the wreckage for decades, but maybe it's worth something to the guys back at the guild. So I just, you know, kept banging my head against this here. Uh, I also tried my hand against fighting more giants. Man, they're tough. I guess it's because I technically don't have enough stat for them, which I'm working on. All right, Terry. Terry looks aggravated when you hand over the book you found. That's it? That's an old copy of the Manual of Labor. Keep the stupid thing. We've got tons of those already. Ah, I should have known it wasn't worth the trouble to mess with that stupid old ruin. Well, what are you standing around here for? Go find something to do. I'm busy. Terry growls, get lost. I'm busy. And you decide that discretion is the better part of not getting punched really hard. All right. He wants me to defeat my nemesis. Let's see here. Oh, we've got a new weapon. It's a one-handed spear. Ooh, that might be better. Uh, I got that from a giant, actually. Why am I? Why do I not have a weapon? Oh, my thing broke while I was grinding. Ancient weapons can break, I think. No wonder I got my butt kicked. It's a giant seamstress. To a giant seamstress, is a tool. To a giant punk, it's jurly. To you, it's sort of like a weird scythe, I guess? Uh, it's better damage than what I had, but what I have is actually now nothing. And uh, it adds more weapon damage and hits weakened opponents. Man, I wonder I got my butt whooped. I'm really bad at noticing that. That keeps happening. It's happened twice now. Jeez. Jeez. How much is this? 16 to 31 damage. Yeah, okay. Um, let me just smack my lips some more. Excuse me. Anything else I can get? I got Boris's ring. I got the Ghost of a Necklace. Eight sleeves damage is still all right. And then more bonus everything. Hmm. I'm looking around to see what even I could put on me. Well, that might be good. Yeah. I'll take uh I'll take the Ghost of a Necklace off. Because I just upped my damage. And I will put this on. Let me see if there's anything else. Hot resistance, no. Spooky resistance, not really. Not using spells. I don't really need more attributes. Well, I do, but I digress. Punity ring. Ah, uh, whatever, that's okay. Um, hmm. Let's go to the Nemesis Cave. All right, big mountains. The dark, the dark and dank and sinister cave. Let me crack my neck. Oh, hold on. Ugh, I wonder if that came up on camera. That'd be kind of funny. And by camera, I of course mean the audio and no video. Holy moly. The dark and dank and sinister cave entrance. You step into the cave and look around, which doesn't take long. It's a much shallower cave than you anticipated, just barely deep enough for the, that the light from the entrance doesn't reach the rear wall. As your eyes adjust to the dim light, you can make out some sort of engraving on the wall. It looks like a crudely rendered human figure with an angry expression on his or her face, pouring out a bucket of something. Um, subject for an ancient cave glyph. Beginning to feel suspicious, you search the wall more clearly. Aha! Just as expected, there's a fine seam running down one side of the wall. There's also a small hole, maybe four inches in diameter near the seam. Obviously, this is a secret entrance, but how to open it? Lunge and smack the wall. Shove the wall open like a mighty musk ox. Claw the wall open like an audacious otter. Hibernate until the wall opens of its own accord. Sumo the wall with your thick layer of blubber. Give the wall the cold shoulder. Thrust smack the wall. Freak the hell out like a wrath of Wolverine. Meet Smith the wall into an opening? Uh, push push the wall open like a, a, a buoyant beluga? I realized as I was reading these that these are all my skills, and that's rather clever. Um, I'm going to claw it open. You rake at the wall with both your weapon and your fingers, seeing that tiny crack, seeking any tiny crack that'll give purchase. Unfortunately, the wall is perfectly smooth apart from the engraving and the hairline center of the doorway. You can't get a grip on either of those. Since that clearly didn't work, and you're just, you decide you're tired of messing with the stupid wall, and decide to stop out petulantly and come back later. Now, did that take an adventure? Oh, maybe your guild can help. Grigner. 
Hmm, the fiend has sealed the cave entrance with some sort of diabolical riddle, you say? Well, actually, the carvings look pretty old, so I don't think... Yes, an angry-looking man pouring something out of a bucket? Let me think. Hmm. Veins bulge on Grigner's forehead as he squeezes his eyes together in thought for a moment. And then his face turns red and he raises his fists in the air. No, no, I can't solve it! Arr, I hate puzzles! These diabolical machinations, they make me furious! Wow, geez, calm down, you say. Take a breath. It's all right. I'll figure it out for myself. Never mind. Okay. Gunther? Terry? Torg? Snagateria? Okay. Grigner? Grigner? Maybe my guild can help, huh? Grigner, huh? Or wait, maybe there's... Something here. Maybe there isn't. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 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 Well, while I'm here, let me get one of these. Let's go fight a seal. Oh, right. This one. Ancient seal. A hermetic seal. Bonk. Oh, damn it. All right, let me hibernate. Now I will come back and use this stupid thing. I can't believe I forgot to heal myself. That was dumb. Waste of my candles. All right. And my fury, for that matter. Jeez. All right, we bonk him. And then we keep bonking him. Hmm. Why aren't I killing him? Oh my god, I don't have a club. You run away like a little coward. Jeez, that was embarrassing. Back to back, huh? Ugh, I'm stupid. Ugh, I'm so stupid. All right, let's try this again. Hmm. You panel the wall with your meat-smithing hammer. We'll make this simple and assume you have one with you, but the wall isn't even dented. All right. Lunge and smack the wall. You lunge at the wall and give it a mighty smack of your weapon. Boom. The echo of your hit rumbles through the little cave, and dust and the bits of grit rain down from the ceiling, but the wall doesn't budge an inch. By the way, for those who didn't pick it up, um, if you don't attack a seal with a club, it doesn't do anything. At least I think that's what's happening. I'm going to grab another one of these. Hmm. Where should I go? Oh, I know. Let's go to the beanstalk. Raver Giant. Okay. Cool. He dances towards you again, and almost un almost stepping on you repeatedly, but suddenly clutches his chest and drops to the floor. Looks like he had a heart attack. He lies unconscious for a while, and then gets back up and starts dancing. Is that a Family Guy reference? I hope it isn't. Oops. Just open my recording. Angry Farmer can't. <laughs> Angry Farmer Candy, huh? Let's go see what that is. That reminds me, can't I um, use this? This appears to be f some kind of bodybuilding manual filled with phrases like dynamic tension and advice like lift with your legs, not your back. It promises to one day make you into the hero of the beach. You read the muscle of labor, manual labor and your muscles swell with newfound knowledge. You gain 20 beefiness. You've already read that today. Your attention span is waning. Uh, that's a reference to that old um, book about, uh, or not a book, in the magazine advertisements about um, Charles Atlas's building, bodybuilding things. Angry Farmer Candy. 5% everything minus, beside, minus mysticality, but more muscle and combat initiative. 
Ooh, I like that. What does this do? Oops. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Let's uh, let's heal myself. Cool. Walrus tongue. Walrus tongue. Walrus tongue? Yeah. All right. Top four. Ooh. The steampunk giant's room has more copper tuning in it than you'd use to plumb a whole house and more wood than a forest full of lumby, uh, horny lumberjacks. Lumby horner jacks, if certainly. Uh, I hate dyslexia. A Jacob's ladder zaps away in one corner, and most of the flat surfaces are covered with little steam-powered clockwork whirligigs, whose purpose are hard to divine, and which are probably solely ornamental. There's a little crack in the baseboards behind you, and you can hear through it. You can hear incense and muted sobbing. Smell incense and hear muted sobbing. Let's go through the crack. You crawl into the crack in the baseboard and emerge in the station salon of ennui and despair that is the Goth Giant's room. Melancholy and the infinite lameness. This room is decorated in three colors. Red, the color of blood. Black, the color of despair. And white, the color of bone. And pan cup makeup for dressing like a sad clown. They are posted on the wall with, for bands with names like Crystalline and Farction. She stubbed my soul and unbeloved. <laughs> uh, there's a whole shelf devoted to black and white comic books with titles like D Timmy the Deranged Serial Killer. Hey, go to hell. The comic that that's actually uh, referencing is really good. I think it's Johnny the Homicidal Maniac is the actual title. And it's by the Invader Zim guy. Uh, Jordan Vasquez, I think his name is. Jordan Vasquez is hot as hell, by the way. All in all, it's a sol uh, one solidly depressing affair. And one of the most depressing things is the goth giant sobbing his in his candlelit bed while, while maudlin music plays. If you want to get out of here while making him, you might try following the puffs of steam coming from a crack in the baseboards. Give me steam. Oh, well, we're back here. Go to the crack in the baseboards, wait for a puff of steam to clear it, and then slip through. Merge on a shelf next to a model Zeppelin and a pocket watch with May 20 extra gears. Let's harumph. Your harumphing draws the attention of a steampunk giant who misinterprets your disdain as an attempt to get her attention. She espies your model airship and her face lights up. Well, the part of it that isn't obscured by brass does, at least. For me? Excelsior, she exclaims. Whatever can I do uh, for you in return for this gift? Well, you reply, I could use a lift down to your kitchen counter if you don't mind. She doesn't mind and drops you into a tiny helium-powered zeppelin, which delivers you gently onto the kitchen counter. You finally made it onto the kitchen counter so you can get to that short wheel. It says that right now it's the, procrastinations gi <laughs> the procrastination giant's turn to take out the garbage, which explains a lot. Spin that wheel, giants get real. Spin the wheel, making it the giant's turn to take out the garbage. He'll probably complain about doing it, but he complains about everything, and at least he'll get the job done. Now when the council cleans up the planes, it should stay cleaned up. All right. Yeah, look at that. Let's go back. And let's see. We found this in the garbage when we were cleaning up. Thought you might have some use for it. Not sure what you did to venture, but the garbage stopped finally. Thanks a lot. And we got a giant discarded bottle cap. It's probably equipment, right? I'm probably popping my mic right now. Don't mind me. Um, hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's a hat. Damage reduction three and minus ten mysticality. This is a giant discarded bottle cap, big enough to be f f uh, to use as a hat. It'll do a good job of protecting your head, unless you account, uh, encounter an opponent with a giant bottle opener. But it's pretty hard to see out from under the brim, which isn't actually a brim. What do I have on now? Wolf mask. All right, I'm going to put this on. I want to take the wolf mask off. I don't care if it's not a great. Can my guild actually help me, by the way? Is it because I haven't done this stupid quest yet? I don't care. I don't want to do it. Anyway, what the hell am I doing now? Highland Lord, right. Um, hmm. Let's go to the oil peak. I haven't been there yet. Up from the ground. You face your, you brace yourself for another fight with an oil slick, but come to the realization that it isn't an oil slick at all, but a puddle left behind after an apparent bout of infighting between two larger oil creatures. 
a closer examination reveals some useful leftover bits. And those are your favorite kind of bits. Three bubbling crudes. <laughs> pushing down on me, pushing down on you. You look at the peak in the signal pyre. Uh, the whole mountain is groaning and creaking with the pressure underneath it. There are geysers and puddles everywhere, and they seem to have some sort of evil intelligence. They form in a threatening fists and obscene gestures whenever you look at one for too long. If you're going to get that pyre alive, you're going to have to lower the pressure somehow. You're finding an oil slick. Oh my god, look at the... Does that show up on camera? Look at the pressure. <laughs> it's actually written. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> some oil... Some oil seeps from the ground in front of you and flows your way. Hey, want to fight it, Burbles? It'll be a gas. Get it? Yes, and now I'd like to give it back. It gets the jump on you. Just to give you a light, sweet smack, but its technique is too crude. Crude, ha ha. Bubble and crude. You killed that oil slick with grace. The pressure on the peak drops a little bit. Cool. Um. Hmm. Oh, let's, uh, I think I've got something that I want to use. A boo clue. Yes. All right. Now I'm just going to go get my ass kicked. Follow the map to a battle site. It looks like a cobblestone city street with abandoned housing flats on the other side. You look around for ghosts, but there's only a little toe-headed boy wearing a gas mask. He turns to face you, which is a little creepy. You okay, little guy? You lost? The kid looks at you with reflective goggles on his face mask. Are you my mummy, he asks. No, I don't want to buy any gun. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you right. No, I'm not your mummy. Are you my mummy? The kid asks, moving closer. I can probably help you find you. Are you my mummy? The kid says, still edging closer. A ghost flies out of one of the windows and lands between you and the kid. Don't let him touch you, the ghost screams. The kid looks at you one last time and fades away, leaving you incredibly creeped out. You know, I watched Doctor Who for a very brief period of time. Um, I quit because the show sucks. Uh, and I've got to say, I never found that episode too scary. I don't know why everyone talks about it like it's hot shit or something. You walk further down the street. Oh, that's annoying. It looks like it's cut off in the recording, but it might not be. Uh, you walk further down the street and see what you can see what you can only describe as a couple of disco robots. No, seriously, they're all in super shiny metal and they got these gigantic headphones on their heads. One of them notices you and says and points. You will be deleted. It says in a deep monotone voice. You will be recycled. You ply. Gernfunnel fun fundle buzz. Gurmble. The robot reply, robot reply is still pointing. What? I can't hear you through all the distortion effects in your voice. Seriously, you're worse than that growly dude who dresses like a flying robot. Rodent. Jesus. He said, the other robot says, activate horror lasers. As you're about to ask what a horror laser is, the two robots fire some kind of blue ray out of their pointer fingers, leaving you speechless with terror. They clang away into the night while you try to catch your breath. You huddle for warmth and on the stoop of the deserted flats. A group of Watson commandos walk by, chatting with each other about the professor. Hey guys, you say. You always talk about the professor, but no one says what he's like. I mean, what does he look like? Does he look like a bitch? One of the Watson says, well, he's got long curly hair and this great scarf that's like 50 feet long. He's great. No, another one says. He wears a big suit and trainers, has great spiky hair, and got a lime wearing coat. That one's my favorite. I think that's the eighth doctor. That one's the one I like. And apparently one no one else likes. Lies, the third one says. He's got big ears and wears a leather jacket. Sounds like it's like you're all worshiping different guys, you say. The three ghosts turn to you and in unison say, He's always the professor. They fly away, the terrifying shrieks still ringing in your ears. Uh, you see a squadron of Watsian ghost warriors gearing up for a battle down the street. It's a werewolf, giant floating head in the jar, a couple of Victorian era steampunks, a guy in a business suit, a skeleton in a spacesuit, and a couple of cat faced nurse nurses. While the Watsian army must have a heck of a progressive uh, recruitment program. Then you hear something breathing heavily over your shoulder. A bipedal rhinoceros in a spacesuit snores at you derisively. What's wrong with that, he asked. The Watson Chronicle is everything to all people. It's science, it's horror, it's fantasy. Who wouldn't like to see a squadron of fairies take down a pig flying a zeppelin? You try to apologize, but the rhino call <laughs> calls over the rest of the motley squadron, who haunt the bejeebers out of you before marching away. Nice. Well, let's look at my wounds. I know that I keep just like essentially killing myself here, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> let's go look at the oil pig some more. Another oil slick. With a rumble and a gush and other onomatopoeia, a slick of oil seeps from the ground in front of you and ripples happily. Oh, that's better at burbles. I was under pressure and needed a release. Not to be crude, of course, but that's how it is. 
It gets the jump on you. Your opponent brushes up against the hot plate and suffers three damage. It extrudes an oily pseudopod right into your ear. Ugh. It's like the slimiest wet willy ever. Gross. All right. You lunge at it, impaling on your giant safety pin and dealing a bunch of damage. Way to go, Vlad. Oh, I impaled it. Ha ha. Uh, you win the fight. The bubbling crude in front of you gets a lot less bubbly and a lot less crude. Keep it up and you'll have the peak clear in no time. You get bubbling crude. Um, what does that do? Recents. This is a handful of magically animated crude oil. It's bubbly. Not like a happy, sor happy sorority girl is bubbly, but like a cauldron of boiling poison is bubbly. How much oil doesn't congeal in anything good? Let's try three. Only God can make a board, but you make a pretty good facsimile, or at least a pretty disgusting one. You acquire an item, oily boyd. Oily boyd. This is a boyd made of oil. If its wing gets buoyant, you'll have to noise it back to health. Weakens, weakens enemies a little bit as it briefly stuns them. Jesus. Back to the oil peak. Puddle of oil seeps out of the ground in front of you and verbals oil can. Wait, should I? Oil can. Oil can. Oil can what, you ask? Oil can beat the crap out of you for making crappy puns, the oil says, starting to rise. All right. Your powerful thrust impresses your foe, but it's the ensuing smack that truly dazzles. The bubbling crude in front of you is a lot less bubbly and a lot less crude. As per the huge. You poke with a pointy end of your safety pin and hit it with a blunt end. All told, it deals that much damage. You kill that slick oil with grace. Pish on the peak drops a little bit. A puddle of oil oozes out of the ground and rises in front of you. Sweet, I'm finally out, it burbles. Oil bet you're going to try and fight me now. After that pun, you're right, you reply. It slaps a pseudopod right across your mouth. Did you know crude oil tastes like stale Doritos? Now you know. Does it really? I assume that's correct. Uh, gross. So I'm just kind of banging my head against this, I suppose. Where is it now? Jeez, that's a lot. You drop your giant safety pin on your bung. It tries to give you an oil change, but lasts the viscosity and tenacity to do so. Oh, actually... Let's go to the let's go to the Hermitage again. Let's buy one more ten leaf clover. Orchasm, right. Man, the council quests just get longer and longer. Up from the ground. Hey, look at that. Oh, whoops, that was a new one. Everybody says that Britney Spears is better than you, but he managed to do a pretty good job of spearing your opponent with your giant safety pin. Deals that much damage. Uh, the ground beneath you start uh, stops creaking and shifting a bit as the pressure drops a couple of micro bowies per mercury. Micro bowies. Jesus. Oh my god, because it's under pressure. It's not mercury as in the pressure of mercury. It's mercury as in Freddie Mercury because Freddie Mercury and David Bowie sang the song Under Pressure. Oh my god, I'm going to kill myself. What does five do? How about two? Four? Six? Seven? Oil cap. Interesting. I was just banging my head against that. All right, 155 and damage reduction. Oil cap. Regenerating MP and sleeves resistance. Interesting. Let's just look at what... Oops. Oil gets me. Oh, whoops. Excuse me. I've got 30 adventures left. This is a nightcap. Oh, whoops. I can actually read it on here. I suppose that's a little more professional. This is like a nightcap. If a nightcap were a hat made of night, you wear on your head. So it's nothing like a nightcap. Two to four MP verse per adventure. That's pretty powerful. All right. Bubbling crudes. Let's see what the I even... Obtained from the cod piece. Using nine makes an oil lamp. Using ten makes oil slacks. 
Uh huh. Oil slacks. Combat initiative plus 10. What's the oil rig outfit do? Oil lamp. Huh. Well, I may as well, right? Back to the oil peak. Let's bonk it. Another bubbling crude. It tries to stick an oily pseudopod in your ear, but you manage to avoid getting an oily wet willy. Pseudopod means false foot. It tries to give you an oil... I think I read that, actually. Pseudopod means false foot in Latin. And it's how uh, amoebas slime around. Because they don't actually have feet. They just make a little bulge, and then they squirt into their own bulge. And man, isn't that disgusting? Certainly a gross way to talk about it. Okay. Microbreweries per mercury is still... That's so brilliant. Because at first I saw I saw the HG and I was like... Yeah, I saw the HG here and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. 10. Oil slacks. Your mother always said that when life gives you lemons, you should make lemon pants out of them. That lesson probably applies to oil too. All right. So now I've got the snow butter pants. They're 100 power. And they give me more damage absorption. These, on the other hand, give me 120 and more combat initiative. I mean, if you ever worn polyester slacks, you worn slacks meant oil. You also were born before 1970 or a hipster, but that's beside the point. But these are a little more immediate in their made out of oiliness. They're still dripping with light, sweet crude. Cool. All right. Bubbling crude. It lubricates your thigh. Ugh. That is... Oh, dang. That was the one I didn't read again. Oh, well. Wow, wow. I, I, I am... All right. Some oil seeps from the ground in front of you, burbling evilly. Well, come on and fight me then, you say. Are you a lubricant or a lubricant? Get the jump on it. Bonk him. The overall level of oil inside the peak drops a little bit as the oil slick you just fought evaporates. How much are we getting down here? Yeah, we're down there. Cool. All right. Um, this is going to be the last episode I record in this little burst. Unless I come back after, I think it's around uh, 9 or 10 my time. Yeah, it's about 9 or 10 p.m. my time when the uh, site gets refreshed. So if I decide to come back and record another one, I will do so. All right. All right. All right. All right. I just had it. Where the hell are they? Bubble and crude, right? <sighs> they are. Okay. Nine. All right. You... Glom blob, you glom globs of oil together until they're in a shape resembling a lamp. You love lamp. Oil lamp. This is a lamp made out of and also full of oil. You could carry it around during broad daylight, saying you're looking for an honest man, and everyone who has a liberal arts degree would know who you're talking about. Oh my god. Well, okay, so this gives me more sleaze and hot damage. This gives me a little hot damage, but damage is someone who attacks me. I damage enough people on my own. <gasps> And also, it gives me that. Hell yeah. All right. Now, if I were to put on um, Lady Spooky Raven's uh, Whatcha, Whatcha Gooey, I would, again, stack sleaze damage on myself. Um, let's go see the artist. Dark side of the tracks. Let me to paint your portrait. Oil. On one hand, it destroys the world. On the other hand, it allows us to experience the glorious agony of watching the world be destroyed. Jesus, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, that's probably good for this episode. Let's see if I can... Well, hmm. Bip. Man. I love this. I love that it changes my portrait. 
Clayben or Sorcerer Ghost. A ghost with a black robe wrapped around it descends on you, shouting, Do you belong to the noble house of Hero Goat or the foul decalant house of Evil Face? I don't think I belong to any house at all. Boninate Batoxium, the ghost shouts, waving a wand at you. Ghost tries to smack you, but his hand goes through you. We got a boo clue. Cool. All right. Um, I am going to do the last Abu clue and then I'll cut this episode. I'm sorry I smacked my lips so much. Here we go. You look at the map. Pretty easy to understand, so you commit the collocation to yada yada yada. You follow the map to an ancient battle site and see a pair of Watsian ghosts dueling fiercely with a couple of Clayben or wizard ghosts. The ghost of ionic energy zaps the air from the Watsian's iconic pli ionic pliers, and the ghost of magic erupts from the Claybender's wands. The more you watch, the more question burns in your mind, just begging to be asked. Okay, here's what I don't get, you guys. The ionic pliers can pretty much do anything you want, without explanation, right? So isn't the professor just a wizard, and the ionic pliers form a magic wand? One of the Watsian ghosts howls in rage at your question flies shrieking away from you i mean flies shrieking away through you it's pretty darn freaky or damn freaky excuse me you follow the map to the bat you follow the map of the battle site to a crypt that glows with alternating red and blue light you hear more ghosts getting their fight on in there it looks dangerous and it sounds dangerous and it quacks like a duck but you should probably check it out if you want to continue you see two ghostly followers of Duke Scar Killer and his galaxy battles backed into a corner and fighting furiously great flashes of red and blue light coming out of their light savers they're cornered by a trio of Duskin Raiders, screeching about how dreamy Jared the Duskwalkers, Jared the Duskwalker is while slashing with their fingernails. I don't know what your deal is with Jared the Duskwalker, you say. I read some of his gospel and it was the worst written thing I ever read. I couldn't stop laughing. Two of them descend on you, raking your soul with their ghostly nails and then moaning and wailing into the night. In the back of the crypt, there's an ancient stone door with space tourist runes on it. You open the door and see a stone staircase descending as far as the meager light lets you see. You're sure it leads somewhere awesome and fun, like stone steps vanishing into the gloom always do. You walk down and down and down and down the steps. At the bottom, in the vast underground chasm, there's a ring of space tourist ghosts chanting. Reverse the polarity of the neutron shield array, they chant in monotone. Funnel the dilithium signature through the hexamania matrix. Wow, your religion is really complicated, you say. Religion? One of the tourists responds. This is science, okay? Then three ghosts take turns scaring the crap out of you and fly away. Like a very condensed and more painful version of the Christmas Carol. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. You explore the vast underground chasm further. Until you come to a place where stalactites and stalagmites have grown together. Making a spooky underground petrified forest. You see flashes of light through the trees and hear the occasional shout of the Latin phrase. But at least some claybenders are reenacting a battle down here. You follow the sounds and see a whole squad of claybender wizards waving their wands and hurling spells at some battly ghosts. With the shouts of Explodum Gonadia, <laughs> Slicem Intestino, and Removio Pansum. I guess it's not too hard for you guys to come up with new spells, eh? You say. Punchio Facem, insult us your mothery. That's not funny, a claybender ghost says. The whole squad raises their wands, turns to you, and in, us and in unison chants, Scary as half to death to... What follows is terrifying, but at least the uh, Claybenders leave after they've done their deed. I'll be honest. Making fun of J.K. Rowling has only gotten better and better with time. All right. It's 20% hotted on Abu Peak. Um, that said, I'm pretty much dead. But I've also recorded a good spring of ep spree of episodes here. So uh, I'm going to cut it here, and I'll come back and record probably late tonight. Um, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the game. So, you know, there's that. Uh, again, I implore you to go play this game. It's free, so the only thing stopping you is if you don't have a, like, way to access it. But I guess that's what I'm here for, to raise awareness for this bitchin' game and to uh, be the only source of it on, like, phones, since there isn't an app. I suppose you could just use it through the browser. But anyway, I've been Alfred. This has been Kenny Loathing, and I've been having a great time. Remember to wash the windows and mirrors in your house. I currently sit in front of my mirror, and it's really greasy. Stay curious about the future.